to video of microsurgical management of large cerebral and medulloblastoma in one and a half years old baby boy presented with irritability regression of milestones not accepting beats vomiting continuously in arteries and sodium examination showed dull child not crying not taking beats and sleeping all the time with bulging anterior fontanelle he was investigated with the mri scan brain showed a large posterior fossa cerebellar vermean mass with significant brain stem compression and gross ventricular megaly lichen was multilobulated and quite big and going on to the both sides and going superiorly up to the superior part of the foramen and inferiorly up to the medulla oblongata and upper cervical spine these are the mri images showing the tumor he was taken up for surgery since he was in a poor neurological status with arterial sensorium and not accepting feeds first we decided to put a shunt to improve his general condition and sensorium he underwent right ventricular peritoneal shunt and after 3 days he was taken up for major surgery midline suboccipital craniotomy and transvormian approach microsurgical total excision of the lesion these are the craniotomy operative steps we make two bur holes on one on each side just below the transverse sinus confluence of venous sinuses as torcula and make a bone a wide bone is taken out in one piece as is as shown here in the video a large bone is taken out exposing both the cerebellar hemispheres and midline now dura is opened with base towards the transverse sinus that is the craniotomy c1 arch also we take out to decompress the tonsils now as we open the dura tumor is seen on the surface here that superior vermis inferior vermis and you can see the lobulated transparent part of the uh, jelly like part of the tumor and it is coming on to the surface the most important part here is to open the arachnoid to access the tumor so that since the tumors here they are the intraarachnoidal plane one needs to maintain that for comprehensive and comfortable excision of this tumor now that is the inferior part of the vermis telovelar region tumor is on the surface there and as soon as we open you can access here appears to be quite vascular and firm in consistency so first the devascularization on the surface and on the sides needs to be done to have comfortable and safe smooth resection of the lesion the capsule of the tumor is opened in a cruciate manner the lower part of the capsule internal decompression is started now the tumor is decompressed the tumor since it is firm it's not coming into suction and appears to be vascular now we bring in the ultrasonic surgical aspirate and start decompressing the lesion now you go to the periphery and superior surf surface of the tumor arachnoid is opened and again the surface of the tumor is coagulated and vascularity is reduced that's the lateral part of the tumor going into the cerebellar cerebellar hemisphere onto the lateral side now again the plane of cleavage is created between the tumor and the cerebellum now the surface is coagulated and vascularization is reduced you can see the tumor is quite firm and and this vascular now with the upper part of the tumor now you can see the vascularity there again the 
coagulation is done and the the the, the surface is devascularized probably these are the blood vessels going into the tuber and supplying now with the ultrasonic surgical aspirate the rapid internal decompression is done here tumor is coming into ultrasonic surgical aspirate quite well and internal decompression is done the lower lobule or the lower part of the tumor part is decompressed internal decompression is done as you see here and tumor is reduced in size once we do that the tumor capsule falls inside and easily starts getting separated from the surrounding normal cerebellum now internal deep blood is done and the bleeding is stopped with bipolar coagulation and hemostasis is achieved it is always better to have a hemostasis at every stage now you see how easily once the internal decompression is done tumor starts getting separated by itself from the normal surrounding cerebellum tumor is quite well capsulated and and once you do the decompression it starts getting separated the raw surface of the cerebellum inferiorly and laterally is covered with the wet cottons and bleeding is stopped so the inferior part now is separated the inferior lobule and taken out completely now hemostasis is achieved as shown here now we try to create a plane of cleavage within the arachnoidal plane between the normal cerebellum cerebellar hemisphere and the tumor mass that is the superior and lateral part of the tumor that is middle part of the tumor again on to the right lateral aspect of the tumor that is the firm tumor again the surface is coagulated with bipolar and vascularity is reduced and again similar way the capsule is opened as you see here capsule is opened and internal debulking is started that is the part of the tumor which is going laterally into the cerebellum the capsule is opened again tumor is quite vascular and firm here again internal decompression is done using the QSA and you see the tumor debulking is done and hemostasis again is achieved that is the middle and superior part of the tumor and it is as we see it on the MRI it is multilobulated tumor which has multiple compartments now as I mentioned to you earlier once the internal decompression is done you can see the lateral part of the tumor on the right side as you start gently pulling it out tumor starts separating from the normal brain normal cerebellum there is a very good plane of cleavage between the tumor and the cerebellum you can see that very easily it is getting separated from all around you can see the major bulk of the tumor on the right side is dissected and separated and removed the tumor bed has a vascularity is coagulated and hemostasis is achieved as i mentioned to you earlier it is always better to achieve the hemostasis before you proceed further into the next quadrant now we have achieved the hemostasis now we are concentrating on the superior part of the tumor at the superior vermin region now again the the, the arachnoid is opened and lateral dissection is done from the tumor and the cerebellum now that is the superior part of the tumor it is coagulated and cut and tumor is gently separated from the normal cerebellum you see how easily it starts getting separated if we remain in the arachnoidal plane and dissect the tumor out one need not be in a hurry to do that and we should never lose this plane of cleavage between the tumor and the cerebellum now you see tumor starts getting separated from the left lateral aspect of the of the tumor left aspect of the cerebellum 
now gently that is separated from the left lateral aspect and the superior aspect the tumor is separated once we do that the whole bulk of a tumor gets separated now you see we can gently put a tag and pull it out here is the more vascularity on the superior part of the tumor here which needs to be coagulated and devascularized and cut with the sharp dissection that is the superior part of the tumor which is going to the anterior and superior part of the tumor going into superior vermis that is again the plane of q is there and tumor is gently elevated and now you can see how easily tumor starts getting separated from the normal surrounding cerebellum once you remain in the arachnoidal plane that is the superior and the anterior part of the tumor we are separating it now see with a gentle dissector and separating it from the normal surrounding cerebellum there may be some amount of bleeding ooze one needs to put a wet cottonoids and bleeding usually stops now you can see that now tumor is getting separated and in a child of one and a half years one must always keep a watch on the bleeder and keep transfusing we prefer to give a blood transfusion from the world go we don't give any fluids we start the blood from the initiation of the surgery so that whatever the child has lost is replaced always and child will not go into hypotension now you see once the superior part of the tumor is taken out you can see the floor of the fourth ventricle superior part of the floor of the fourth ventricle comes into view and the lateral part of the tumor is getting easily separated at this juncture we prefer to close the aqueduct of sylvius with the cotton so that the blood from the dissection site of the tumor bed doesn't escape into the aqueduct and it goes into the third ventricle and may form a hematoma or or hemorrhage into the third ventricle and it may block the aqueduct and leading to hydrocephalus now we wish that aqueduct is always covered with the wet cotton till we do the complete resection and bleeding has stopped now that is the inferior part of the tumor inferior and right lateral part of the tumor is dissected and separated and taken out now you see the floor of the fourth ventricle so well you can see the middle cerebellar peduncle and inferior cerebellar peduncle that is the middle cerebellar peduncle and inferior cerebral peduncle tumor is attached to that that is coagulated a small raw area of the tumor is excised now you can see the whole floor of the fourth ventricle completely aqueduct is opening there that is the aqueduct suction there blood is coming out once the superior part of the tumor is taken out the part is covered with surge cell the raw area of the tumor bed is covered one thing one must remember unless you excise these lesions completely bleeding will not stop and once you excise the lesions completely bleeding will stop automatically without you doing achieving try to achieve any hemostasis that is the beauty of surgical resection remaining in the arachnoidal plane there's a small bit of the tumor in the lower part of the lat lower lateral part of the on the right side of the cerebellum that is that is the inferior cerebellar peduncular region the part of the tumor is still there so that part is again coagulated and excised you can see some amount of cerebellar tissue also is involved there and gently it is sucked with the dissection after coagulation and excised completely now you see completely the tumor is removed and floor of the fourth ventricle now see the csf is escaping into the floor of the fourth ventricle from the aqueduct is clean and clear there is no hemorrhage and floor of the fourth ventricle is perfectly normal there is no bleeding from the tumor site or the tumor bed now aqueduct is covered and we at this juncture increase the blood pressure 
by about 20, 10 to 20 millimeters of mercury to see that if there is any ooze from the tumor bed. This is the superior surface of the cerebellum, that is the, the veins draining into straight sinus and the central vein and the temporal veins. That is the undersurface of the tent, that is tentorium cerebelli undersurface and superior surface of the cerebellum. You can see the pineal region anteriorly, that is the, the, the superior surface of the cerebellum. Now, once you confirm the hemostasis, and BP has been raised by 10 to 12, 20 millimeters of mercury, there is no bleeding, we can stop, come out and stop the surgery. Now, complete excision is done, aqueduct is seen so well, and the CSF is so clear, there is no blood at all. That is the superior part of the cerebellum, tentorium is seen there, inferior part of the cerebellum, both the tonsils are seen, lateral part of the cerebellum. Now, after excision of the tumor, cerebellum has totally collapsed and there is a big, uh, quite a significant amount of space all around the cerebellum. Now you see so clearly the CSF is flowing so well. This is the end stage of surgery. You can see the tentorium there, cerebellum is collapsed and gone inside. That is a tentorial surface, super, superior part of the cerebellum. And this is the CT scan same day evening we get by about 7 to 8 o'clock to see if there is any hemorrhage, swelling, edema or infarction. Tumor is taken out completely and scan is normal. Child was ventilated overnight and on second day it was extubated and this is his post-operative clinical state on day 6. He is walking with support, little ataxic and he is taking orally, wound is healed well and he is ready to go home. This is the histopathological report confirming espoplastic nodular medulloblastoma. He came for follow-up after two weeks. We repeated the scan again, shows complete removal of the tumor and cerebellum, brainstem and cortex verticals are normal. That's our anesthesia team. Our presence online with more than 385 microsurgical endoscopic navigation guided Educative Neurosurgical Operative Procedures. Thank you very much for viewing.